Sometimes you stumble upon a product that just doesn't make sense. And this is one of them. This is a gaming laptop that honestly, like it, it almost shouldn't exist because it's better than a lot of other gaming laptops out there, yet it wasn't made by like a huge brand. Well, it kind of was. This was developed by Intel in collaboration with a few other laptop brands. And the purpose of this project was to make a gaming laptop, a thin and light gaming laptop that was different from what was out there to make something that they thought was gonna be a better experience for the consumer. And I mean, they, I, they did it. So this is the world's lightest gaming laptop, yet it has one of the biggest batteries on the market and it has amazing thermal performance, possibly the best thermal performance I've ever seen in a thin and light gaming laptop. And it comes at a reasonable price. Now, the way they were able to achieve this title of the world's lightest laptop is because of the material they've used. This is using a magnesium alloy for the entire thing, like the chassis, the top panel, the bottom panel, all magnesium alloy, and it is very noticeable. It's a lot lighter than you expect the moment you pull it out of the box. Now, in terms of just gaming laptops, it is quite rare. I think this is the only one I've ever seen that had magnesium all over. We've seen this material used on some of the Surface devices and some of the thin and light Ultrabooks, but to see magnesium used throughout the entire process of a gaming laptop, this is a first for me. Now, the design of it is more generic looking. I wouldn't say that I love the aesthetics of it, but Intel did work with a few brands, so I guess depending on which company you purchase, it from, you're gonna have a different logo up at the front. This particular one is from Electronics. I've covered a couple of their products on my channel before, but they also worked with Dbrand. I think Intel collaborated with them, so they have their skins available for this laptop. The build quality seems pretty good. There is a couple things I kind of want to draw attention to. At the bottom of the device, you'll see the speaker grill. And I mean, the location of this speaker grill isn't great, but you'll also notice beside the speaker grill, there's like a plastic tab or like cutout. And maybe in the development process, this air was going to be used as a speaker cutout and they just didn't end up going with it. So they just covered it up. But I think this plastic bit here kind of ruins the design line in this area. It just makes it look less clean. And I honestly think it has this effect to make this product look cheaper than it actually is just because of the plastic bits there. It's not something that's gonna affect anything other than just like a visual aesthetic thing, but it is something I noticed. Okay, ports. So there's three USB A's and then there's a Thunderbolt 3 in the back as well as your AC adapter. So you get to keep your power lanes out of your way. There's also an SD card slot, which is nice to see. A lot of thin and light gaming laptops are leaving that out these days. Um, okay, on the inside, we have access to a bunch of stuff. You have your two RAM slots. You can get up to 64 gigs on this thing two NVMe drives, your Wi-Fi card. They include Intel's latest Wi-Fi 6 card and a big 93 watt hour battery. This is the second biggest battery I've seen in a thin and light gaming laptop. The Aero 15 that has like a 94 or 95 watt hour battery. This is close to the legal limit. I think it's like a 99 watt hour limit. If you bring it onto a plane, like you can't fly with a bigger battery than 99 watt hours. This is like, this is right at the cusp of that. So it's really cool that something this light has such a big battery. And in terms of battery life, got a little bit more than seven hours of my regular tests. So internally, this thing's done a great job. It's got easily accessed components, easily upgraded components. I mean, they did a good job. Okay, let's get to the rest of this thing. The screen, they have a 144 Hertz IPS panel, it's pretty bright and they've kept the webcam up top and the bezel's pretty thin on this thing. This type of screen is not new. It's kind of the standard at this point in time for high quality gaming laptops, but keep in mind the games look really good at this refresh rate. Okay, the keyboard. This is a mechanical keyboard, but don't let that fool you into thinking that it's somehow like the best keyboard in the world or anything. It's an okay keyboard, but you do have to get used to it. Now, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time talking about this keyboard than most of my regular videos because this type of laptop isn't going to be readily available at like your Best Buy or something to test out. So I'm gonna to try to convey what this keyboard experience is like through this video. The keyboard layout is fine. I don't think there's anything weird about it. I think that most people will enjoy the layout. It's the mechanism for each key that makes this experience a little bit harder to get used to. When you're typing on the keys, there's a little bit of play on each keycap and it's not abnormal. Basically every laptop keyboard in the world has a little bit of wobble on your keycaps, but because of how this keyboard is designed, you feel the adjacent keys a little bit more than you would on a traditional laptop keyboard. And I think it's because it's not a chiclet style keyboard. Like when you're typing, you can't depend on any framing to guide your fingers. You have to hit each key accurately and you'll eventually just touch the other keys around you. So it just feels a little bit different 
I've used keys like this before, but this one was definitely harder to get used to. Now, that being said, I don't think this is a bad keyboard. I think most people will get used to it over time, but it's definitely something you have to spend time with to get comfortable with. And I think the reason why this whole problem exists is because of the magnesium alloy chassis. Like in order for them to have a regular chiclet keyboard, you need to cut out individual holes for each key. And maybe on an aluminum chassis, that's a little bit cheaper and easier, but for the magnesium alloys, maybe it's just too expensive or too time consuming. So in this case, Intel just cut out one big rectangle to house the keyboard, but in doing so, the typing experience is a little bit different. I don't think it's a bad keyboard. You just need time to get used to it. Okay, the trackpad, great trackpad, glass surface. It's got good tracking and a nice click mechanism. All right, let's talk about performance. This unit is running an RTX 2070 Max-Q with the 9750H. It's a very powerful combination, excellent frame rates in games, and I believe there's a cheaper version that's running a 1660 Ti. But the thing that's most special about this laptop is the thermal performance. So this thing, has very low temperatures and Intel has configured this unit with a negative 50 undervolt. I don't know if this is like a final unit or if that's the number that they're gonna stick with for retail units, but I've tested this thing out a little bit. You can push it to like 120, 130 pretty comfortably. I think this possibly has the best temperatures of all the thin and light gaming laptops on the market. And you can even bump up the wattage of the CPU in their software comfortably. So, I mean, they did a really, really good job. Obviously, Intel knows how to design a CPU, and obviously they know what they're doing when it comes to thermal performance, but I just didn't think that it would come in this form. Like, you would expect Intel to work with like Razer or Alienware or some other huge brand to make something like this, but they've done it with smaller laptop brands. And I think this product is gonna put pressure on the bigger companies to make something that can compete with this, because this is like really, really solid. Now. This is a abnormally good product, but just because it's so unique, it doesn't make it perfect. Like I don't wanna oversell this thing by saying like, you know, everyone should go out and buy this thing. There are issues, particularly with the keyboard. Like I don't, I don't know how much this is gonna affect the average user. I mean, for me, it's not a big issue, but for some people that are more particular or picky about this keyboards, I could see this being a bit of a deterrent, but I think most people will get used to this pretty readily. Overall though, I think Intel did an amazing job on this device. Like they just, they nailed it. All the important stuff, they got it done right. Now the speakers, I didn't mention them, but real quick, they're located on the bottom. They don't sound particularly good. If you're expecting amazing speakers, this ain't it, but otherwise, you're looking for the other stuff that I mentioned, and you don't mind a keyboard that you do have to kind of work at to be comfortable on, definitely check this thing out. So this one is the Mag 15 by Electronic. It's gonna be available from other companies as well under different names and stuff, but this one's gonna be available on Amazon. And there you have it. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.